Hi, this is Larry London. I welcome you to Border Crossings. Today, we are joined by singer-songwriter Begonia, and she has a brand new album, Powder Blue. We're going to talk about the album and her plans to tour and everything going on in the world of Begonia. It's great to have you here on The Voice of America. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So Begonia is not your real name. Why did you come up with Begonia? Yes, my Christian name is Alexa. But so uh, I started this project as a little aside before the Amazon Alexa was popular. But I, I feel like I had this uh, spiritual foresight not to go with Alexa as my as my name. But my full name is Alexa Dirks. And I mean, yeah, just full. Disc- I, I just felt like it sounded a bit country. Mm-hmm. And I when I first started this project, uh, I didn't know, was it going to be a band? Was it going to be just me? I had been in bands all my life. And then I kind of just decided, like, I think I want a name that kind of gives me a bit of a shield when I first started. And then I came up with Begonia and it meant something to me in that, like, I really love flowers and plants. Begonia is a plant with many different species. Some are kind of rough around the edges. Some are a bit more like beautiful and delicate. And I felt like Oh, that's me. <laughs> and and then when I started, the, the more that this project kind of got into motion, the more that it felt like, oh, this this is me. This is just me. And then the Amazon Alexa came on the market, and you know, I don't need right. to be asked like, hey, what's the weather? Like, uh, yeah, everybody got a sense of humor. If you're in a room and somebody's talking to Alexa, and you go, huh? You know, exactly. no, no, not you, the other Alexa. Exactly. The truth. <laughs> well, Begonia is a great name. That's a beautiful name. And you look great today. You look lovely. You're all dressed up. Now you were, uh, I guess you've got a, a, a awards, many awards and many accolades as an alternative artist. You're like, a, you know, called alternative. Would you feel that that's a, a term that best describes you? Alternative? Because sure, it's yes. usually as an alternative to what is the yeah, question. Well, exactly. <laughs> well, because I do feel like I am a pop artist, but not necessarily the pop artist that you would hear on the radio when you turn it on. So then that feels kind of like, okay, I guess I'm alternative. That's all right. It works for Avril Lavigne. So no problem. I'll take it. Uh, Both Canadian. (laughs) Yes, both Canadian. You've been nominated for uh, Juno Awards. And Mm -hmm. so you've, as I say, you've got other awards. You were number one on the charts and, uh, you had a lot of success in what has been a short amount of time. You've been doing this for what? How many years now? Just four like or five? Five, six years. Yeah. Five, six years. Yeah. And the new album, Powder Blue, is your third album? Second. Second uh, album. Well, I had an EP come out in 2017 and then a proper full length, my first full length in 2019. And then, yeah, so this is my officially second full length mm-hmm. record, but third output, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is a very personal emotional album for you it took a a few years to create the music that's on the album yeah it did yeah and some of it started pre-pandemic some songs most like not most but some songs were started pre-pandemic and then finished kind of during pandemic lockdown so it was like headspace shifts throughout the whole thing as well and yeah yeah it's always I try sometimes to write songs about other people and it always, <laughs> it never really works out for me. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, usually when I, you know, it's, it's interesting to hear a songwriter's perspective like that. Cause a lot of times you write about relationships and you write about people in failed relationships. Usually, you know, it's broken mm-hmm. hearts and, you know, unfortunate situations. And I think you went through a, a pretty traumatic situation that inspired some music on your album. Yeah. I mean, something that I was still processing, I guess, the the probably most cliche thing that you've heard from a lot of artists is that during pandemic lockdowns, I had this opportunity to look at my mental health in a completely different way that I had never prioritized before. I'd been on the road since I was 19. So, and, and on and off. So it was kind of like, I didn't really understand that I was running from anything particularly, but then as soon as I slowed down, I was like, Oh, it was so easy to distract myself from some of those traumatic experiences when I was just constantly stimulated by the world around me every day, a new adventure. <laughs> so not, not really, yeah, like pointedly trying to run away, but it was easy to. So then now during those lockdowns, yeah, there were some songs again that I started before and then took on entirely new meetings. And it wasn't like I was experiencing 
uh, necessarily things for the first time, like new things. It was like going back to some of those old wounds and really like opening them up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, now that stars are talking openly about struggles, mental health struggles, physical struggles, whatever they might be, mm -hmm. addiction, so on and so forth. Um, you were in a dark place. You said that you were kind of stuck there and didn't know how to get out of it. So advice for those that are tuned in right now, what got you out of that? I mean, yeah, it, it's, it, it's a constant choice for me to, to try to choose, I guess, joy, but I'm not really into like the toxic positivity kind of like, you just got to be happy. It's like, for me, it also took people around me to be like, Hey, something's not working here for you. Like, and I thought I was keeping it to myself, but the more that I was opening myself up to the community around me, the more that there was kind of a mirror held to me that I couldn't uh, escape it anymore. And I started going to therapy and I started finding different ways to kind of cope with my highs and lows. And I mean, for me, the goal is not to be happy all the time. It's just to be able to cope with those highs and lows better. And for it not to just like keep me in bed all day, every day. And just to like, to kind of help with that. And I feel for me, it's a community thing. Community is huge and reaching out to people around you. It's not like you have to go put on your social media, like everything that's happening to you all the time. But like, do you know someone that you trust? talk to them because that kind of stuff just bubbles up and creates all these different poisonous veins that then become something that is harder to understand the longer you go without trying to process it or talk to anyone. And I learned that the hard way, but I mean, yeah, it's, that's something that I always encourage anyone, like if from stage or wherever, it's just like, talk to someone you trust. It doesn't have to even be a licensed professional to start. Just talk to someone that you trust. Yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, that's great advice. And it's, you know, it's very helpful. You know, everybody should surround themselves with a great support group. So that's, that's very important and to talk openly about your feelings, but yeah. we appreciate you sharing that, you know, bit of personal insight with us. Begonia is our guest. You're going to do a song for us right now. Yes. What song? Yes, I'm, I'm doing three songs. And mm -hmm. the first one I'll do is called butterfly. Tell me about butterfly. So Butterfly was one that, you know, often there's different kind of writing strategies or like ways that I write songs. And this was one that just kind of spilled out, which doesn't always happen that way. Two of the songs that I'm performing today are kind of like that, where sometimes I sit there and I try to think like, what is the song going to be? And I try to kind of like uh, create something very specific in my brain. But this one, I was just at the piano and it just all kind of came out front to back. And it's just about my relationship with growing up in a very religious family, growing up quite religious, and then my kind of distance from that as I've grown and my feelings towards mm. that. <laughs> all right, Butterfly, here's Begonia. This is Border Crossings on The Voice of America. Who never 
chipped my tooth at the swimming pool Memorize the golden rule Thought I'd show the world the light Now something doesn't sit quite right Border Crossings, and that is Butterfly. We're talking with Begonia, who's the writer and singer of the song. The song is on the new album, Powder Blue. And uh, it's a very expressive song, very personal song. Do you write the lyrics or the melody first when you come up with a song? It, it, depends, on, it depends on the song, really. Like For something like that, I think it kind of came at the same time, the, mm -hmm. the song Butterfly. But Sometimes, like, often things like that will come when I'm doing mundane things, like taking a shower, putting away the dishes, uh, like, putting away my laundry, like, whatever. It's like, then, oh, something will hit. Or, generally speaking, right before I fall asleep. And then I'm like, oh, I'll remember. But that's why I always try to keep my phone, like, near my bed, because I never remember when I wake mm. up in the morning. And I've learned that. But, yeah, it's like, usually they kind of come hand in hand for me, but every once in a while I try to keep like a journal or my notes app near me that I can just write different pieces. Cause that's something I've also learned through songwriting for this many years is that it doesn't always have to come all at once. And sometimes a little note that I would have written maybe five years ago when I'm in an album writing process, I'll go back, I'll have journals all around me and I'll go back just to mine to see like, okay, Maybe I thought that that was just one line or one thought, but now that now that's inspiring me to write a full song about it or whatever. So mm. you never know what you can spark know. something else in the future. Well, that's great. I mean, and what do you do if you get writer's block? Where do the songs come from in that situation? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, there's two things that I guess you can do that I do. Sometimes I just walk away. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I put it down and I go for a walk or I sit on my porch or I just like try to get that clarity. And then other times, so there'll be times where uh, I have two main collabor collaborators that I work on all of my records with. And they're Matt Schellenberg, Matt Peters. They go by Dead Men. That's their production duo. And oftentimes when we're writing for records, we'll set aside concentrated time. So we'll be like, okay, we're going to a cabin for two weeks. So then you don't really necessarily have time for writer's block in those situations. So then that's when I just push through. If I feel like I'm just kind of writing something and I'm in my house, then sometimes I'm like, okay, I can't force this. But if we're making this concentrated time, I, I try to just experiment with pushing through and what that feels like. And sometimes that means taking some time to stream of consciousness writing, mm -hmm. trying to just be the least judgmental of myself in those moments. Because again, you never know in an hour or so, in a month or so, you can come back to something that seemed like garbage and then you can find this whole new life in it. So mm -hmm. I really try to not neuter the process as much as possible, but the imposter syndrome 
is very strong sometimes. So <laughs> <laughs> We've got Begonia with us here on Border Crossings. Butterfly is a song we just heard, which you said kind of came at a time you were separating yourself from a religious youth, a religious background. Um, is there any subject that's off limits or are you, <laughs> will you write about everything? I don't, I mean, I'm sure that there are some topics that are off limits and I never want to make people like uncomfortable, like <laughs> being like, what? but at the same, it's just like, for me, I'm more and more just trusting my instincts. If I feel like I resonate with something then I hope that someone else does. And that's kind of the process for me. So I can't say, I'm sure there are things that at some point I'd be like, no, I'm never writing about that. I haven't necessarily gotten there yet, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure there's something. Begonia is our guest and you're going to do another song for us. Mm -hmm. This next one's called cold night, cold night. And what mm -hmm. was the inspiration? Yeah. So this one was one that was started pre pandemic with uh my collaborators dead men and we were kind of just working in their studio just trying to get dip, like just rapid fire different ideas so at that time i think it was 2018 when we started writing it uh billy eilish is when we all fall asleep where do you where do we go was like a huge record and we i remember us being like listening to that a lot and being like kind of inspired by that so we it was kind of more based on a production style at first, like chopping up my voice, recording my voice, chopping it up, putting it on a MIDI keyboard and sampling it kind of a la Billie Eilish, like in that era. And then it was, so it was more of just like a fun experiment. And then we left it, came back to it during the pandemic. And I was like, Oh, this means more to me than I realized. <laughs> and then kind of finished it in more of that emotional space. Man, yeah, so many of the things, the more that I do these kind of interviews, yeah, a lot of it, it's very emotional, I guess, yeah. <laughs> and of course, therapeutic songwriting yes, is a form of therapy. Started. You can deal with issues and express your feelings and thoughts. And, and Absolutely, you know. and, I, and I mean, growing up, I remember listening to certain artists or certain albums, and I know how I felt and how it opened my mind when I was able to like hear artists being their authentic selves, telling their truths. And that's something that I want to be a part of. All right. What's the name of the song? Cold Night. Cold Night. Here is Begonia on Border Crossings. Crossings, Begonia with Cold Night here on our program today. She's in the spotlight, songwriter, singer, performer. If you could help, only pick one. If somebody said to you, Begonia, you can be a singer or a songwriter, you can't be both, <sighs> which would you pick? I guess my first love was singing. And then that translated innately into songwriting. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when it all is boiled down for me, it's the emotion that my voice uh, carries for me. Like, and it's the feeling in my gut that I get when I can just let go and sing on a stage and being performing for me is one of the only places that I feel like my mind just kind of stops moving for a second. And I can just be, it's like one of the only places where I feel like I'm the most in the moment. So I guess singing, but yeah, songwriting is such a catharsis for me. But yes, if I had to choose, probably singing, yeah. Magonia's <laughs> with us here on Border Crossings. The new album is Powder Blue. Why did you decide on that name? Is that your favorite color or? I mean, so again, going back to me, just sitting on my front porch, contemplating life during the, a lot of pandemic lockdowns while making this record, uh, even though a person could hear this record and think that's kind of, that it, is kind of chaotic and there's a lot of emotion involved. For me, making this record was a calm in all the chaos of everything going on, even though I was expressing these hard emotions and, and going through all these different processes, like it did feel like a calm to me. Every song felt like it had its own kind of thing going on. There was not one lyric from one song that I thought, oh, this wraps it all up. Like I, I kept trying to think of something that wrapped it all up. And the more that I would just be sitting outside, watching the birds, contemplating life, like taking solace in the blue sky, like the little things that I could just try to 
catch and keep in my pocket. Uh, the color kept coming back to me, powder blue. It just felt so calm to me. And it reminded me of like my wallpaper growing up as a kid was powder blue. My baby blanket as a kid, the Virgin Mary in the plays in church and the blue shawl. And I was just almost every song in on the record, I could connect to that mm. theme, that feeling. So then it just kind of felt like at a certain point, I was like, okay, I keep thinking of this, like a tattoo idea you sit on for like a year and then you come back, you're like, I'm, I'm, I still like it. So yeah. that was kind of the name for me, even though I'm not that thoughtful with my tattoos, but with, uh, <laughs> with the name, I like sat with it and was like, oh, okay, this keeps resonating with me. I'm gonna, that's it. That's mm. the name. Sounds like your parents wanted a boy. <laughs> you grew up in a powder blue room. <laughs> you never know. I'd have to ask them. We'll have them on next. <laughs> Begonia's with us. Talking of tattoos, I mean, you've got a lot of artwork there. What's the most interesting story of your uh, body work there? I know, right? What would be? Well, I got this one on my birthday. <laughs> it's a little sweaty pig with the Cupid's bow. <laughs> and it represented me this year, you know, just showing a little bit of body, um, but still a bit shy. So we're a bit nervous and sweaty, but cute and wants the world to be in love. Mm. I love it. I love it. You're going to do another song for us? One more before we go? Yes, one more. It's called Married by Elvis. Married by Elvis. Yeah. All right. Anybody who's been to Las Vegas, you may not understand this. <laughs> Married by Elvis. Here's my go. Border Crossings, Married by Elvis. Begonia's with us. Are you an Elvis fan or what was the inspiration of the song? I'm not really an Elvis fan, <laughs> <laughs> to be frank. Sure. No one come for me, but I'm not. Uh, it was more, this was another one of those songs that I was with Dead Men. They started playing this guitar riff and it just, it just came out. And I'm not one, generally speaking, in my back catalog to have a lot of tender love songs. That's not usually my thing mm. but I was feeling it and I was trying to just like access again that point of joy and like love that I have was feeling at the time and it was it's more so about the absurdity of love than it is about Elvis himself it's more so about when you're in love you do stupid stuff sometimes yes. <laughs> you, you do silly things it drives you and that's something that my partner and I whenever we would talk about like do you think we'll ever get married? It's like, well, maybe we'd be married like by an Elvis tribute artist, but that would be like <laughs> maybe as far as it would go. So then that's was kind of like a joke to me and then felt like it just kind of played into it. But really, I found this whole new appreciation for the Elvis community when I made the music video for this. I made it with like eight different, and they're tribute artists, not impersonators, which I learned the hard way, but it's... <laughs> I, I made this video because right when we wrote the song, I'm like, oh man, I can already picture the video. It's just me hanging out with all these different Elvis tribute artists, like just hanging, just <laughs> earnest hanging out, just doing things. I'm in a club. I want to be in their club. Like, and so then I, we got all these artists from like across Canada to be in this video and we just hung out. We like shot off fireworks not like the most in the most, most safe way, but like we did that. And we like went to the bar. We went to this weird mansion in Winnipeg and we just hung out and it came off as earnestly as I wanted it to, because yes, no, I'm not really an Elvis fan, but I'm not like making fun of anyone or like whatever. It's just like, not really my thing. It's, and I'm not really even a fan of marriage, but it was more just, it's about love, earnesty. And then the video just like, made it feel like it was about friendship in some ways too. It just turned into this whole mm. other, it's just a tender song. It really. sounds That's like fun. It. Sounds like a lot of fun. I always wondered if you've got more than one Elvis, does it become Elvi? Yes, it is. It is Elvi. It's Elvi. It's Elvi. Hey, yeah. No, you got it. Me and, and five Elvi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and seven Elvi, actually. Seven Elvi. Elvi. <laughs> Begonia is our guest here on Border Crossings. And uh, we're going to wrap it up, but I just wanted to ask you top three artists, dead or alive, that you would like to collaborate with if, on your wish list. Oh, my gosh. If I could sing with Joni Mitchell, if I could sing with Fiona Apple, if I could sing with Erica Badu, Stevie Wonder, D'Angelo, uh, there's too many. Gillian Welsh. Wow. So many people. 
a diverse group too. So that's, <laughs> that's wonderful. That's very wonderful. It kind of shows how diverse you are and your music is. And so everybody needs to get a copy of Powder Blue, which is the new album, which is now available. And you're planning a tour. If people want to come and see you on tour, where do they need to go to find the dates? Yes, go to www.hellobegonia, B-E-G-O-N-I-A.com. <laughs> slash your, tour if you really want to tour dates but get the whole website experience they get not? the whole thing what what is your uh fans known as do you have a name for fan your fans i've had some people in live streams say that they're begonies but i don't really know what that means so <laughs> I, I we'll figure it out hey if you if you think of anything let me know all right all right thank you so much for being on the show and before you go uh you know the troops are tuned in we're on in 100 countries worldwide the troops are also watching is there anything you want to say? Shout out to the troops. Shout out to the troops. All the love. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Begonia. Powder Blue is the name of the new album. My name is Larry London, and you are watching Border Crossings on VOA TV.